Hello everyone, Dr. Kevin Zeta with you with Warrior Notes and welcome to Kevin and Friends. And today I have as my friend, my wife, Kathy <laughs> Zeta, and we're excited about everything that God's doing at Warrior Notes, but also um, we're excited about what God's doing through Kathy because, you know, God is launching her out into ministry and she's actually been in the ministry and been on the mission field uh, in years past. So, you know, even before we met, you were on the mission field. So twice actually mm -hmm. in Saipan. So. Um, we're going to get right into uh, what we're going to talk about. We want to talk about uh, a subject that's really dear to your heart and, and some of the, the testimony that you have in your, in, in your life um, when you met Jesus. And so let's just yeah. get right into it. Um, thanks for being on Kevin and Friends, <laughs> <laughs> even though you're already my friend. So, yes, and but, you're my friend too. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, let's talk about prayer nations. Uh, there's, there's this uh, one um, painting that I saw that you really like, and it was a, uh, a, a fire that had been, looks like it had been burning mm -hmm. uh, all night, you know, yes. and then it was like these red coals. It was yes. really cool on uh, top of a mountain. Mm -hmm. And I really liked, I really liked that. And um, we have that, we have that picture in our house. We uh, do. Yeah. So um, Embers of Dawn, you know, is something that God spoke to you about mm -hmm. um, this, this, uh, thing that to Timothy was told by Paul, you know, fan in the flame, yes. uh, the, the gift that's in you by the laying yes. on of hands. And so, you know, let's talk to us a little bit about that, because I know that the, the power of God was working in your life, even as a young lady. But uh, how did this all start out? And what does that Embers of Dawn mean to you? Well, Embers of Dawn is, um, it sort of speaks to me of a death process where, you know, you think that your flame is going out. Yeah. You know, and that every word the Lord is speaking to you is um, appears to have uh, died. All right. your all your circumstances are opposite to that word. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. So you're living with the word of God in you, yet the circumstances all around you uh, seem to be saying exactly the opposite. And so there's like a death process, you know, in the other scripture we were talking about earlier, it says, you know, unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. So sometimes we want to run from that death process. Oh, yeah. But actually, um, a death process really helps us. It's be necessary, it gets, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it's like in that death process, then the life can come forth. And that pain, that's what that painting that we have speaks to me about. Yeah. And it was a season I went to right before I met you went through. Yes. And um, in dawn, in the dawn, it says the, the darkest hours right before the dawn, which is really too, if, if you've ever, ever experienced that, it gets really dark, extra dark for some reason, right before morning, right before the birds start singing, right before there's like a little bit of light, it's extra dark. And even it sometimes gets even chillier. Remember we've experienced that. It's, it's just yeah. kind of that one little place. And so, um, this painting shows at dawn, there's this campfire that probably the, the night before was blazing, but at dawn, it shows this beautiful campfire with some, it's just glowing embers. Mm -hmm. And it's like the fire survived. <clears throat> and that spoke to me that, you know, I survived that death process. And then when the, the spirit of the Lord began to blow on me again, then all those words that I had uh, been going through so much warfare over and wanting to let go, but you can't really let go unless you want to, you know, get rid of the Lord, which you don't want to do. You know, it's like um, uh, Joseph said, until the word of the Lord came, the word of the Lord tried me. So um, it's an encouragement to all of you. I feel like I am an encourager. You know, I always end up encouraging people. Yeah. <laughs> and so if you're feeling like that's you, where uh, it feels like, everything's died that um, rejoice, you know, and count it joy. The Lord actually says for us to count those things joy when we go through hard times. And um, that what is of God will endure. The, the, the word of God is incorruptible. The word of God is Jesus. So if he's spoken a word to you or over you or, you know, that word will stand the test of time. It'll stand the test of persecution. Um, he's just asking you not to let go. And um, so that is like a word that he gave me also is that the plan is not too grand. So you might feel like, well, 
what he's told me seems so grandiose. There's like no way that that could ever, ever, yeah. ever come yeah. to pass. And let me, let me do the introductions for these. Yeah, okay. these are, the, um, the, you would say that a lot. Yeah. And, and uh, some people might not understand, like when you say something like that, what does that mean? So, um, you know, if God shows you something, it, it almost always surprises you because it's, it's bigger mm -hmm. than, than like what you might have thought at all. And, and so uh, I, I know you that way, like the, the Lord speaks and then it's always bigger. We always see much more happen than even what we thought. Yeah. And so we've learned to not limit God. So, so uh, you know, when you say that, you're saying, listen, you know, the Lord has something that, that hasn't even entered into your mind yet. And, you know, a lot of times uh, it was way better than what you thought. And so I think God kept keeps stuff from us sometimes just because we would mess it up or we would uh, doubt and fear. Yeah. yeah, so after like tying it in with that painting, Embers of Dawn, after I realized I had survived, it was like, well, now I, it's like I needed to get some momentum again, you know? And, you know, maybe another, another day I'll explain all the details of the testimony, but for the purpose of this, um, this show here, is um, he told me I was sort of like, I was very uh, sobered, I guess, you know. <laughs> I, it, I felt like a ping pong ball out in the ocean at times, you know, just so vulnerable. I was like, how did all this happen? Because yeah. this is like totally opposite of what the Lord spoke to me. And um, of course, you know, I learned about deception too, that, um, you know, you can be deceived or you can also, through lack of knowledge, you can get um, off of God's perfect plan. There's a good, perfect and acceptable, mm -hmm. you know, and you can settle, you know, if you don't have enough revelation. And that's why we are so big on prayer and worship and being lined up with pure, true um, ministries so that you can hear clearly, you know, and stay on track. Um, so, yeah, after the death process, I was like, okay, now what? And um, I went to Lord, the Lord, you know, and I was, we had our little time and I said, Lord, are you mad at me? You know, because I, I made it like a, um, probably more of like a, well, it's just an uneducated decision and got into a situation that wasn't his perfect will. And he said that he was not mad at me, but he knew how much it was going to hurt. So I was like, oh, wow. You know, he just did, he was sad that I was going to be hurt. And, um, then that's when he spoke to me these words, the plan is in that same time frame. It might've been not exactly that day, but he said the plan's not too grand, which meant it's not too big. Like get out of your head and just believe me. He just wanted me to believe him. And so I was like, okay, I can just, you know, I can get on the same, I can get on board with that. You know, the mm -hmm. plan's not too grand. Okay, so that's like my first baby step. You know, he's he's just he's getting me focused forward again. And then from there, um, I went to the Lord started bring people into my life to like kind of um, with the supply of the spirit, people who had been through even rougher stuff than I had just experienced. And um, it was like almost reminded me of Jacob speckled with the sticks, you know, how the Lord had Jacob put the he was being ripped off. And so the Lord gave him a plan how to get, how to prosper. And he said, put these sticks by the water where the cows, um, you know, mate. And then the cows came out looking like the sticks mm -hmm. and, he, and they, you know, he ended up getting all the speckled ones like the sticks, Yeah. you know? And so the Lord did something like that with me. He put people in front of me who had gone through what I was going through and they were like, it was like totally victorious, you know, like, it's like, it, I was like, how did they survive that? So I just lived with these people this family and then I it just like kind of imprinted me that the plan wasn't too grand you know even though I had the word he's also reinforcing it with this family that I lived with you know mm -hmm. and I was being restored and um it's just the power of the prophetic word when you get you know you need to judge the prophecies but I'm just as I'm speaking I'm remembering like my girlfriend Anne she was like real black and white and she called me Catherine and one day we were coming back, I was having to deal with this situation, cleaning up some of just the legal stuff. And she looked over at me in the car and she said, Catherine, you know, I was like, I felt like I'd been filleted. And she said, Catherine, the Lord just wants me to tell you that the good that he has is so good, you won't remember the bad. Mm -hmm. I was like, 
Wow. I'm thinking, thanks, Anne. That's a nice thought, you know. But it's like I don't even know if it penetrated me, you know. But right, because you were traumatized. I was traumatized. Yeah. But so, I, uh, so like, uh, so, so people know, um, you know, you you actually thought that that God was saying something about uh, a marriage, and and then you found out that the person, you know, w kind of reneged on their covenant, and mm -hmm. and so you had to deal with the fact that you know even if it was God's will. Uh, then, then, then this person decided he wasn't going to serve God. Yeah. He wasn't going to, um, you know, he's, he was going back into his former lifestyle, and um, which would, which would bring judgment on him. You mm -hmm. know, so you had to, you had to do what you needed to do, so people understand that um, it was, it was a situation where, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't all your fault for what happened. But you know, when people do, choose to do things. Um, God gives them free will, but then, you know, if it's a covenant when you're in marriage. And so, uh, you know, you, you can't follow a person into that, you know, that, that sin. No. And then, so <laughs> it was a tearing, wasn't it? So, mm -hmm. so you, you found yourself, you found yourself um, in a situation where God spoke to you about, listen, I got some, I got some really good things coming for you and um, it, it's going to work out. And, and so, you went through that process of of death that okay so that the people now understand that you you got a word and it was like a light it was like a light in the darkness so so what happened next like uh, cuz you had a you had a process right yes i had a process and um i when i got born again i got delivered of so much stuff you know it was like night and day, wow. you know, <laughs> my friends were like, you know, what happened to Kathy, you yeah. know, and, you know, you know, I came to school one day and my one of the girls like in the lunchroom, she's like, yeah, I heard you got baptized last night. And they're, they're just like, they're just like wondering what happened to, you know, Kathy. Yeah. And so I thought as a young Christian that what happened to me when you get born again happens to everybody. And so yeah. that's what happened with um, this person that I was married to is I thought, you know, they got born again were cool, you know, right. no, oh, yeah. smooth, no yeah. problems, yeah. you know, miraculous deliverance. And um, so, but ever, you know, then I understood what I learned through the process too, is that certain, um, certain things that people um, get into are take a lot more. I don't know. It's like, whatever the reason was, uh, the deliverance, well, people have choices. Right. So, um, but the Lord told me, I think this is important too. He said, Oh, no man, anything but to love him. So the Lord continued to reach out to this person. Um, it was more, it wasn't so much about the marriage that was, that was important to the Lord, but it was more about his eternal, his relationship with God. And so the Lord was continually reaching out to him. He told me to, Oh, no man, anything but to love him and to not, it, not to focus on him, but to judge myself that I would not come out Tell, there's a scripture that says you'll not come out till you pay every penny. It was basically, I had to be clean, you know, to come out of that situation. So I was continually reaching out and the Lord would begin to speak to me because there was not really any repentance. He just kept going more into his old lifestyle. Um, the Lord began to speak to me about divorce, which I was like, I don't want that. I came from a family of divorce and it's like, that's not on my radar, you know? Yeah. It was like, that would be like the worst thing to have to go through. Like, you know, that'd be like ultimate abandonment and rejection and the whole thing, you know? And, um, but what happened, I think what you're referring to is there was a service I was in where the word of the Lord came to me. This was like after months, I, I even had the divorce papers, but I just couldn't bring myself to like get out of the boat and the word of the Lord came to me, this is the day, get out, don't ever look back. I will carry you as a shepherd would carry a lamb. You know, I'll carry all the days of, of your life. And I will again, you know, he talked about the restoration. He talked about Kevin actually in this prophecy. It was a beautiful prophecy that any, before that talked about the ministry that, you know, how the Lord was going to use me. Um, but what just went off like a light at that moment, the rhema for me for that particular moment was to get out and don't look back. And that's the, that's, you know, there's a lot of good, there's, there's pure prophecy. And so I always want to like say, you need to judge the prophecy, but this was, this was undoubtedly the word of the Lord to me. And I was activated by it. So I had the knowledge what I was supposed to do. But once the word of the Lord came to me, I never looked back. 
And I realized that to not divorce this individual would be to, it had reached this point between him and the Lord. I think this is really important for people to understand that, mm -hmm. you know, there's... Um, yeah, because he was being unfaithful to the covenant. He was, yeah. he was in a lifestyle that he was cheating and, you know, yeah. and there, it was grounds for divorce, yeah. you there know, was for this, infidelity. So, and the Lord gave him a yeah. space of repentance, but right. then there became, if I didn't get out, I would be like endorsing what he was exactly. doing. And then you yeah. become part of the problem. Yeah. So I was able to, um, actually my pastor paid for the divorce once he saw I was going to move forward with it. I think he just, I think that was like the Lord, you know. He was helping you. Yeah, I didn't need yeah. that, but it was just like, it was. Like no, a, it was a token it of, was, his, of his it love. Meant, yeah. yeah, it meant something. So I realized that, um, yeah, I needed to m remove myself and let the, it was now in the Lord's hands, you know, it says leave room for God. Mm -hmm. So that, um, yeah. So, yeah. So then after that was completed, um, I began to just rapid restoration. You know, I was living with the family and I'm getting the new vision and, uh, you know, the old vision had died, but now, now I'm seeing, it's like, I'm in the rest in a sense. Like I was even, I, it takes me to, um, how are we doing on time? Well, we'll just let's just go on to um, the, the the subject of going the second mile. Yeah. Because um, you you um, you found out that a lot of things are not like instant. So there's a process yes. that things have to go through. And so you know, it's it's one thing to say, okay, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to do this. I'm going to obey God. Uh, you know, I'm going to I'm going to uh, make decisions. But it's another thing to have to dis to, to stick with it and. Going the second mile, um, you know, to talk to us a little bit about that because, you know, it's it's a we're in a long distance run here. You know, it's a long yeah. distance runner. So yeah. Yeah, and that's a good point because, um, just to speak into you know that initial wrong decision is I had for the first time in my life right before I met this person you yeah. know, that I was married to, I had gotten the I know I had, you know, as a kind of like pray about being married and all that. Right. And when I got back from the mission field was the first time I ever, I had that knowing that it was, it was that I was coming into that season in my life. Yeah. So it became, I had this revelation that, okay, I'm in a new season. That's going to be happening yeah, to me. Yeah, you can feel it, can't you? Yeah. It's a shift. Yeah. yeah. It, and then, so what I did is I found someone who looked like they filled the bill. It looked like, you know, this is, this is probably it. Okay. But it was my, at the time in my life, even though now in hindsight, that wasn't really my heart's desire. It was like, close it was more like I settled mm -hmm. so um so then I'm sitting so I wanted to include the scripture what happened to me is um I was sitting on the dock one day with the Lord and I got I was reading in Hebrews where it says um I'm just going to turn to it real quick oh yeah go yeah it's Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11 yeah chapter 11 um verse 1 I just love it it was it became part of me which is what's really cool, like to like sometimes you think, oh, I don't like this season in my life. But if you just hold on to that word, whatever it is, the word that's being contended for, you know, it says persecution arises for the word's sake. So don't take it personal, but hold on to that word because that word will actually it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That word will become part of you. And then after you get on the other side of that word, you're con that's being challenged you will like, wherever you go, you'll be able to like impart that word to other people if they're, they're willing. Right. And um, so it says in Hebrews 11, when I was sitting in the dock in Washington state, spending time with the Lord on my walk and the scripture says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And I read that scripture, which, I mean, that's a pot. We all know that scripture, but it dropped into me. Like all of a sudden, my faith was evidence. I knew I was going to be restored in the area of marriage. I just mm -hmm. knew it. I mean, you couldn't get it out of me. It was so real to me, yeah. you know? And, um, so I continued living with this family and, um, I think, I don't know. It's like, I'm sharing more in my testimony than I had planned on, but I feel like in the testimony there's, um, there's hope, you know, and it's, it's a testimony. This is a testimony the, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. So right. it's like, it's because of Jesus that all these wonderful things happened mm -hmm. and that, you know, I have been totally restored, you know? And um, so I had that scripture, you know, that I was gonna, I, that it wasn't just like a prophecy to me that he was gonna restore me in that area, but um, now it was dropped into me. It was so real. 
But what happened was, and why I talk about going the second mile is I, I started feeling so good. Like I was so restored. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I remember one night coming home from like a, it was like a Bible study or a, a wedding shower or something. And I told my pastors that I was living, I was living with their family. I said, you know, I think I'm ready to move out, you know, and maybe move in, get an apartment with one of the girls in the church, you know? Right. I just felt so good. You know, it's like, you know, I just was like so restored and feeling strong. And they're like, well, no, Miss Kathy, we feel like you should really see this out till the end, you know, and stay here with us, you know? And so I respected them and I said, okay. And then, but I felt like I was going, it's like, I was like ready to move on, you know? And it was like, that's what I mean by going the second mile. I, I submitted to them and what they were seeing and um, they already had seen the restoration. They'd already seen like, they didn't know Kevin, but they'd seen him in the spirit. And, um, you know, they knew that restoration was coming. So it wasn't long after that, that you actually got that word to come up to our church. Yeah. And so then I was still, you know, living with the pastors, which I could have still probably met you if I wasn't, but it was like, there was something the Lord was doing there, um, you know, so you know, it seemed like, you know, it paid off in a sense that yeah, I was in the yeah. right place at the right time. So don't, you don't want to, uh, you want to go, you want to be went, not sent. Exactly. And you also want to go all the time. Yeah. We always say that. And we always, and we tell people that, and you also want to get things so good to where you don't want to leave. Like even that was like with your job you know, Southwest Airlines, the Lord mm -hmm. said it's going to be so good before you leave, you're not going to want to leave. Yeah. You know? And it was, it was amazing. It was an amazing journey. Yeah. And it's, it's hard to leave, but yeah, I had to. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, um, the principle is Jesus. They said, Jesus said, no man takes my life, but I lay it down. So remember the, make sure the ball's in your court before you make a decision, you know, don't do anything under pressure, get things you know, go the second mile, get things even better. So it's like so good. You don't want to leave, then leave, you know, mm -hmm. then, you know, your motives are going to be right. You know, yeah. you're not doing it for the wrong reason, you know, and that's just a good practice to have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's, let's, uh, let's get into this next, uh, area. You, you, because you learn how to do the second mile and, you know, you were actually before we let's I, I want to touch on something with the second mile. You um, you even were on the mission field and you actually actually uh, wanted to come home at one point. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, the you actually went to two terms, two terms in, on the mission field. And you stayed there even when you didn't even want to be there. So mm -hmm. just to, just to add that a little bit of that, uh, yeah, that, that explanation. I'm sure that the the people under will like that. Yes, because you you had to stick it out. I had to stick it out. The first time I went, I was so excited, you know. And then when I um, my term was finished, I knew I'd be coming back, and I was like so excited. That was like thrilling to me. Um, this is a part I don't know if you know, but I ended up having to, instead of coming right back because of different things going on at the base there in uh, Micronesia, for some reason, just we were, I was in correspondence with them and stuff, but I ended up staying home for almost a whole year. And that was really hard. It was like, I knew I was supposed to be there, but oh, like wow. a whole year. And so then when I got, I returned, the door opened back up and I returned to go um, back to Micronesia. I remember my mom driving me to the airport and we were crying because it was like we knew that I might not come back. I left stuff in storage so that if I felt called to stay there forever, I would, you oh, know. Wow. And um, so we were crying. And so she dropped me off and I got there. And the ministry that I was involved with is called Youth with a Mission. So they're they're like how they do it is they you know God and then you make him known. So your first the discipleship training school that I went to, you spend the first half which was about two and a half to three months getting to know God and working on the base. Everybody worked and we all um, went to classes. And then after that is when you do the outreach, you know, and we had put together this, um, this play where you could, it preached the whole gospel. So you could understand it without words, but, we, with, but we'd also done a, um, like a narration to it in several different languages, which because mm -hmm. in Micronesia, it would be like um, if you lived here in wherever you live and then you went to another state and then all of a sudden they speak a different language. That's how it is in Micronesia. It's a 
the territory, Micronesia is a lot of islands. The area is as big as the United States, but it's mostly water, but lots of little islands. So it was getting time to go on our outreach and I just felt like I was done, you know, which I was, I was done with the practical part, you know, knowing God and going to classes. And so I called my mom, like I was so, <laughs> I was so convinced it was time to go home. I said, mom, I, I need a ticket so I can come home back to the States. And um, she's like, honey, you know, I can't do that. You need to stay. So that was another voice, you know, yeah. of somebody, you know, telling me, nudging me or putting her foot down, which my mom's like a mercy motive. So, and she loved me. So for her to say no, to not have me come home. Oh no. That was yeah, a yeah. big she deal for baby. my mom. She won her baby home. Yeah. So. Okay. Well then, well then um, the next, the next uh, thing that you want to uh, well, yes, real quick, can I share one yeah. thing? So, so I stayed, obviously, and we f I was on and um, we were flying to the Outer Islands where our outreach was. And that's when I, um, the Lord, bro my heart broke is in a good way is I felt all of a sudden as we came into these really remote, like no electricity, you know, just real remote islands. Um, well, where we landed had electricity, but then we went to the Outer Islands where there's no electricity. But as we're flying into these remote islands on a jet liner that could take me back to the States, you know, it was the most civilization I'd felt in a while, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> we're flying in and I heard the Lord say the poor and needy search for water, but there is none. But I, the Lord, their God will hear from heaven and heal their land. And I all of a sudden felt his compassion. I knew how much he loved me, but yet because of them, he was allowing me to be dis uncomfortable, you mm -hmm. know, in order to reach them. And so then, you know, it was just wonderful and people's lives were changed and um, yeah, especially one guy named Lazarus, you know, yeah, that's a, he that's was, a cool yeah, story. he came back to the Lord. He had found out about Jesus when he was in California at college and had had a real hard time when he went back to the islands. And yeah. um, when he, our team came there, he was just like, so he felt like we had come just for him, which maybe mm. we did. <laughs> yeah. So that's cool. That's the, in a nutshell. Okay. So you, you also want to, uh, want to comment on this this subject it's um get your eyes off of man and so um you know we we know that the fear of man is a snare and we know that that's why it, it is healthy to fear god it's a beginning of wisdom because mm -hmm. it, it really helps us set our priorities yeah so uh talk to us about that i'm sure that people would like to know what you learned about that because you know you had to learn to stick it out with what the Lord was telling you to do. Yes, so. I did. Um, that was a, a word too that came to me off a pulpit, which um, was to get your eyes off man and that I haven't forgotten you. And, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes the Lord will bring you a word and you're like, you didn't even realize you were doing that, you know? So I studied that scripture, you know, and it says that the fear of man is a snare but he who trusts the Lord will be kept safe. You mm -hmm. know, it's in Proverbs. And um, so I started to examine myself, you know, that, um, yeah, I had to make sure that what I was doing, you know, and even today we still have to do that because, you know, it's like the Lord's plan that will stand, you know. Yeah, and so you're always looking at your motivation. People need to understand that you're always looking at your motivation. If you have the fear of the Lord, then you're always looking at your motives and, and making sure that, that it's God's agenda and not yours. So when you you um, have fear of man, then man has power over you, and they can manipulate you in your in your soul. Yes. So talk to talk about that because you you had to set yourself on a track mm -hmm. that 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 um you know if you would have listened to the fear of man, you know you wouldn't be where you are today because you would have just done what everybody else was telling you to do. You know, even if your your mom wanted you to just stay home, you would have never went to the mission field. But at least, you know, she was mature enough to know that you needed to do this. And, you know, and you were mature enough to know that you need to stick it out in situations. So what what have you, what have you learned about the fear of man uh, versus well, the fear of God? Yeah, as you're talking to me, you know, um, I'm remembering a specific situation, which actually was the day I, we met. Is oh, wow. I, I was in the service yeah. and um, you had come up. I hadn't met you yet, but you, the Lord it told you where I was. And um, I was in the service and the Lord, and we had a guest minister. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, what are you going to do about what I promised you? Which I knew that meant being restored in the area of marriage. 
And I was shocked that he had asked me that question because I was like, couldn't, it was like almost hard to fathom that I wasn't believing him in that area anymore because I had been so focused, you know, I felt like I was just like, had this target fixation in that area, you know, just wanting to make sure I did everything right and, you know, got restored. And mm -hmm. so uh, apparently I had gotten so comfortable just living with the family. Mm -hmm. The church was doing very well. We had, it was on fire and um, I was growing like a weed and we were riding, I liked horses. We were riding horses and sh showing horses and training horses. And um, it was just like a real restorative time in my life. And so when yeah. the Lord asked me that, I was like, wow. Um, so I judged myself and I'm like, I got back into, I'm like, I need to get back into faith. So um, the presence of God was so strong in that service. I said, Lord, you know, um, I know what I, I thought what he meant was that he wanted me to start believing for that other person to come back to the Lord again. Yeah. But what it did to me is I said, okay, Lord, I will do that. This is what, where they uprooted the fear of man for me. I said, I will do that. Even if my pastors think I'm nuts, which they would, because they were like, they didn't push me, but they like prayed me. They're like, so glad I'm like out of that situation. You know, <laughs> they like prayed me through. So I'm I glad hear, too, cause yeah, I, I got yeah. to marry. <laughs> yeah. I got through. <laughs> So, but I said, you know, Lord, even though they'll think I'm nuts, I will start believing for that person to come back to you, you know, whatever, standing for him, praying for him. So immediately when the service was out, I went to my friend and I said, girlfriend that I trusted, I said, Karen, I made a covenant with the Lord. I'm going to start believing for this person to come back to the Lord again. She's like, I just want to be accountable to you. She's like, okay, as I'm telling her this story or this covenant I'm making with God, she, Dottie, there was a woman of God that um, Kevin and I both knew who had actually brought him to the service, walks up to me and says, I'd like you to meet my friend. Now, Dottie, I wasn't looking to meet anybody's friend, but because Dottie was such a woman of God and just a beautiful woman, you would meet her friend because of who she was, right? Mm -hmm. Well, her friend was Kevin. So I want you to see that principle. I was willing to face the rejection of my pastors in order to get right my heart right with God, what I thought it would take. And as I'm about to make that agreement to start believing for this other person again, the Lord just needed my faith. He didn't need me to actually do that. He wanted to see my heart. And it's similar to like Abraham with Isaac. He says, because you've done this and I see that you feared me, all these blessings, you know, and then the rest is history. So Kevin and I met and mm -hmm. then you know, the Lord moved us along quickly and con just continually confirming there was so much peace, you know, and he put us together, um, so much peace, so much prophecy. Um, it was undeniable, yeah. you know, he supernaturally put us together. It was a quick work, yeah. but there was so much groundwork in both our lives before we met, you know, so that, um, that's a good example of the getting rid of the fear of man. And then I needed that to walk out, you know, because of our um, marriage coming together so quickly yeah. and so powerfully, there was like, there was some opposition. And so the Lord used that faith that I had released, you know, in getting, getting me back to believing him, you know, yeah. there's all these little intricacies that's so neat, you know, but yeah. So that, that's a good example of that for sure. Okay. Getting, getting rid of the fear of man. <laughs> yeah, and so you know, the good thing was is that um, that when when uh, I did meet your mom, she she just adopted me as oh, her yeah. son, and she wanted me to call her mom. So oh, yeah. I did the my rest mom. of her life. You know, yeah. I called her mom and I consider her my mom and as well. And then um, your dad also, you know, he uh, he and I just hit it off right away and. Yeah. So it was seamless as far seamless. as what God did with your family. And, and uh, you know, everything was fine. And then, of course, my parents were, were excited. You're so excited, you know, yeah. As well. So we we had peace uh, on on uh, some of the fronts. And then other fronts, it was it was just people uh, trying to catch up with what God was doing. It was such a quick, a quick thing. You yes. Know? But we, we made it through it. And yeah. we, we, we feared God and we knew what God wanted. So it was exciting. It was exciting um, and fast. It was four months we were married. I know. And the <laughs> cute little thing about it was um, you had, the day we met, 
I was still kind of like under the, um, you were more like knew that I was the one quicker than I did because I was still, I had like this little bit of target fixation coming out of that former situation and um, didn't quite have the revelation yet. But um, I think when you came back up a couple weeks later, mm-hmm. I all of a sudden I felt led to pull out that prophecy where I was commanded to get out and not look back. But oh, then yeah. the Lord spoke about the restoration. Yeah. Then I got the revelation that this was the revel- this was the restoration and I felt released. And that's a good principle is that a lot of times you kind of know what you're supposed to do. Um, you have a, a good idea of what the Lord's up to, but there's something that happens when you just get that revelation from heaven and you're just like, you're all of a sudden your face is set like Flint. Like, okay, I yeah. get it. I'm in, you know, it's like, this is more real than anything else. And so, and that's, um, again, I, prophecy is a good confirmation Yes. and because it's from the fire, it can activate you, but you got to make sure it's not going to be fuzzy. That's what we've learned. You don't want it to be frizzy or fuzzy or you gray, ha- or, gray, gray, like gray, yeah. or have a shimmy Blurry, in it, yeah. you know, it's, you're going to know. And so, yeah. so yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, tell me about, um, prayer nations and the Lord, the Lord's really speaking to you about, uh, nations and about prayer. And what does that all mean to you? Uh, when you say prayer nations, prayer nations is, um, you know, whenever we think about like where I feel drawn to, it's always has to do with prayer. Yeah. You know, I'm like, you can't cut it out of me. I just, I know that there's so much, um, that prayer is just so important. And, um, so prayer nations comes from that scripture where it says, you know, the Lord's asking, can a nation be born in a day? Yeah. You know, can a nation be born in a day? And the answer is yes. And, um, of course they're talking probably a lot about Israel. You know, right, but it can be. It's you a know, principle. It, it can be anything. It can yeah. be exactly, and yeah. that's what that's how could, I, a city a city could be born. In exactly, yeah. and that's that just burns in me that um, sometimes because prayer is a thing that you do by faith. You're just you're praying, you're uh, speaking the scriptures, you're yielding to the Holy Spirit, you're praying in other tongues, and it's like you're not really. It's not like building this table where you're like you see the nail going in you know, you're putting the varnish on, you know, it's yeah. like where you're, it's like real, you're real in connected with your hands, mm-hmm. but prayer nations is that revelation that yes, a nation can be born in a day. Yes. A family can be born in a day. Yes. You can be delivered in a day. Yes. Your church can, uh, go to the next level in a day. Uh, all those things is that revelation where that's where you pray from is that revelation that at, it can happen in a day. A nation can be born in a day. So it's that principle of God, how he operates before, um, you know, before we call, he answers, you know, while we are yet speaking, he hears. That's, Mm -hmm. it's like, that's the kingdom of God. You know, he, he speaks and then he sees, you know, he speaks and then he sees. So it's that getting into that flow is where you need to go because the other way is it's like a fish trying to breathe air. If you're going to like believe it when you see it, that's like trying to breathe water. (laughs) I'll believe it when I see it Mm -hmm. that you're not created to believe it when you see it, you're created to, to speak it and then see it. That's how you're created. Yeah. But you know, the Lord, his vision is he, he calls the things that are not as though they were because he actually, uh, Jehovah Jireh means you know, can mean Jehovah sees. Yeah. So he Amen. he sees the truth. He sees the future, but he doesn't need evidence because he is the evidence. Yes. But with us, you know, we're not. We're supposed to live by faith. Yes. We're supposed to to speak from the Spirit. So um, prayer is not just requesting. Sometimes it's proclaiming. Exactly. Sometimes it's it's just standing firm on what God's already said. Yes. And it comes out of like your, your fellowship, your relationship. And like there's, was, it was either Wesley or Finney, but they said he got into such a place in prayer. It's just a good example. Many of you've already heard it, but he said, you don't think we're not going to have revival. He was, he had left everything yeah, Charles to, Finney. Yeah, to serve the Lord and to min- be a minister. Yeah. And he got into such a place in prayer that he started to say, Lord, you don't think we're not going to have revival, do you? You know, and that's the place that, um, that's just my heart to see people in that place. And, you know, 
he the Lord says, you know, concerning the works of my hands, command ye me. So that's the type of relationship we're called to. And um, it's like we need to live in that place. All you know? the time. We need to live in that place because it, all the time. Yeah, all the time. And um, there's a lot of wasted energy in trying to get into a place that we're already called to. Right. And it just has to do with Jesus uh, addressing the lukewarm, the lukewarmness in the church, you know, in, in the book of Revelation, the first couple chapters there, people just seem to migrate or fall away easier than they they go toward God and get hot because this world is a fallen world. So it's it's a it's a war all the time. So you always have to remind yourself of the truth. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, is that we've there are individuals and there are groups of people. There are nations in that, that God has called Israel a nation. You know, we we as Christians are are Gentiles, but mm -hmm. we're grafted in. Yes. So there's there's the body of believers on the earth. And and so um, what what is the Lord speaking to you about with like when you uh, say prayer nations? What do you what, what is going on? Is, is it it's individuals, but it's also groups of people like warrior notes is um, becoming a nation in a sense. Right. Mm hmm. Yeah, and a person's, um, it's like that, I love that scripture in Psalms 24, it says, you know, how the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that, you know, that dwell therein, that, that revelation that all people are really God's. He created them for all people for himself. Mm -hmm. And that, um, but I'd say my heart with the prayer nations is, you know, I, I think a lot of the micro of the macro. So if you can do this at home, like that you're the nation of your home, or the nation of you, you know, to get that, to be ignited, you mm -hmm. know, and then take it to your church, take it to where, where you work. Exactly. You know, yeah. and just, you know, possess the land and just say, yeah, no, yeah, a nation can be born in a day. And I'm not going to say it always happens in a day, but have that revelation that it might not manifest right away, but in the spirit, it can happen. And I don't, I feel like my heart, always my heart is, is not to grow weary, you know, God says he would, that all men would pray lifting up holy hands. He wants us all to pray and to lift up holy hands. You know, you know, let the light of God, you know, go out of your mouth and out of your hands and just change the atmosphere wherever you are and don't grow weary. It's like the, um, I shared this the other day and I think a lot of people have heard about the monarch butterfly. Mm -hmm. Just hit the little flap affects the whole world they found. So how much more when you have the Holy Spirit or the word of God, you know, coming out your mouth, can you, I don't want people to grow weary in well-doing. That's right. People are so effective. And so when you have that revelation that it could happen today, I might not see it today, but that's how fast it can happen because God wouldn't have put it in there if it wasn't true. That's right. So I, I want everybody to be activated and know that even after you leave, your prayers are still here. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Amen. So you're like sowing into the next generation every time you pray. You know, pray for God to have his way. Pray for the purity of the pulpits in this nation, that the word of God proceeds like a fire off mm -hmm. the pulpits. You know, that the word of God's not bound, it's not hindered, that God works with your pastor confirming the word with signs and wonders following. That's right. So God is in the generations. Totally. He He wants a transference. Yes. So even us, we're like working on, um, you know, getting training people to take warrior notes to to the next generation and generations afterwards. You know, we're training people right now with our same vision and our same our, our same heart that God gave us, which is worldwide. And so we're preparing people right now for, you know, uh, what God wants to do in the next generation. So, you know, God, God wants people everywhere to yes. acknowledge him and yes. pray and yes. stand in faith. You know, uh, one of the, one of the other things that you talk about is, uh, and I want to get into this. It's, um, you know, you have a scripture, uh, in Psalms 24 and let's just talk about that. Uh, it, it's talking about your, your vision, mm -hmm. uh, from God, you know, so God gives you a vision and he actually picks a fight. Yeah. Sometimes he picks a fight, doesn't he? Because he did that with Samson. He he was looking for an opportunity to wage war with the Philistines. It says the scripture says, 
uh, about Samson's birth. Yes. So, so what, talk, talk to us a little bit about like uh, your vision f with uh, God and what that means. And, you know, remember, even with Samson, uh, uh, an angel appeared to his mother before he was even born and told her everything that was going to go on and talked about his commitment. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So so uh, what what uh, what is it that God has uh, spoken to you about uh, vision and what does that what does that all mean? Well, I sort of touched on it earlier, but Psalms 24, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all that dwell therein. You know, it's God's, the earth is the Lord's and all the people, you know, so we have that authority. When you have that revelation, it's like, no, the people aren't the devils. The world's not the devils. The, the Lord gave the earth to Adam and Eve. Okay. And so Jesus came back and got us a better covenant. So you know, the, the earth is ours, you know, but as far as picking a fight, you know, part of what, um, you know, you need to, um, you need to pick a fight and, but it needs to be at the word of the Lord, you right. know, because part of what, you know, I, when I got married before you, I had no doubt that whatever that, because I knew everything this person was coming out of, Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's no problem for God. Right. That's like a drop in the bucket. Right. You know, and that's still my faith. And um, we still, we see lots of people in our ministry, in our lives, um, getting delivered because right. we are so sold out. So that's part of a vision is just knowing that, you know, God's promises for, every, there's nobody who's gone too far. The God, God's promises, there's no sin that the blood of Jesus can't go deeper than, you know, right. mm -hmm. you know, that's picking a fight. You know, there's not a sin that uh, somebody can't get forgiven of, except for, you know, if you want to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, that's very grievous and that's very difficult to do, mm -hmm. you know, so you probably haven't done it. You would have to really work hard at it, <laughs> Yeah. you know, and if you felt like you, you know, if you feel like you might have done that and you feel bad, that's not you. If you did it, you wouldn't feel bad. You have to not feel bad. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, the unpardonable sin is yeah. is when you deny Jesus and you you publicly proclaim that He is not your Savior after you've already pro pro proclaimed Him publicly. Yes, and you know that's according to the Book of Hebrews. So yeah, so so back back to the vision. You know, God opens your eyes. He shows you something. It's it's what His intention is for you. It has to do with you walking um, your path out. Yes. Like Psalms uh, 139, he's even gone to your future. Yes. And he's paved a way to that future. So talk, talk to us about what God showed you about prayer nations and about how um, you feel like you want to mobilize people for intercession. You want to you want people to agree in prayer. And what does that all look like, your vision for, for the world and, your, uh, you know, for warrior notes and what, and what you're called to do? Well, it's, it looks like, um, you know, it does say without a vision or in one translation says without a revelation, mm -hmm. people will cast off restraint, yeah. which is so true. You know, if it's just kind of like going in your ear and bouncing off your head, it's like, oh, I like that. But if it's once it becomes a revelation, you know, like Peter had that revelation when Jesus said, you know, he's asking his disciples, who do men say that I am? And they all had these answers. But Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, blessed are you for flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you, but my father, which is in heaven. So that's what we're talking about with revelation. And that's what we want with prayer is prayer isn't just something you have to do and, you know, check it off. It's like something you know that you are like so potent. You are like changing history. You're effective. You are yeah. so effective. And that's the vision. That's like prayer nations. It's like, you know, for years, um, whenever, like I used to pray with our friend Josie, you know, mm -hmm. she's in Iraq now, but we used to pray at the church we used to go to. I would drop Kevin at the airport and then J Josie and I would meet at O Dark 30. We had access to the youth building. And back then even the Lord was speaking, you mm -hmm. know, can a nation be born in a day? Yes, it seemed like nuts. Why would we get up so dark? I mean, so early when it was still dark and just go pray by ourselves in this youth building for like, you know, a long time. But because we had that revelation, yes. And now, you know, look at, I mean, I know that we both prayed. We both, we both, we know the importance. Like when we've hit um, 
like spaces in our lives together where it, we weren't sure it wasn't like a lot going on. We knew, OK, it's time to like really press in in the spirit. And we would go to those. We had people that it's like the Lord would always seem to raise up a prayer meeting for us where we could go and we could just spend extra time mm -hmm. praying in other tongues. Yep. And I remember Brother Hagen saying that he said some of the biggest miracles he ever had was after extended periods of praying in the spirit that's right but we don't ever want people to get into works regarding praying in the spirit there's an ease which we've learned from sister ruth who many of you have watched we mm -hmm. love her there is an ease and ruth heflin would teach that there's an ease in the glory so let the spirit carry you the spirit of god when you're in prayer so that's that's part of the vision too. It's, it's yeah. not like, a, it's not works. No, no. And praying in the spirit is supernatural anyway. It so is. There, there's nothing, there's nothing really except just yielding your tongue yeah. to him. But there is a rest and there are scriptures that indicate that, that the, 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 the baptism of the Holy Spirit and praying in tongues is part of the rest, yes. entering into the rest. Yes. So, you know, Hebrews does talk about this. He says, do everything you can to enter into the rest, yeah. you know. And I love that. <laughs> and it's, it's, it, it's actually, in some translations, it says work really hard yeah. to not I work. I love it. Yeah, lab <laughs> labor to enter the rest. Yeah, so it's like work really hard to enter into the rest. It's kind of funny. But, you know, it's true. We, we used to work really hard so that we can go on vacation. True. That's you know? a good so example. So it's like mm -hmm. you, you, if you're going to put your energy into anything, it should be get walk going into the, the, what the Hebrews refers to as a promised land which is your walk with God, your covenant with God, uh, yielding your your members to God and you start to rest. But you're still like, we're I'm way more productive than when I was working it. Yes. When I, when I was working and trying to do things and, and all the different projects, you know, uh, I'm doing more now in the spirit, in the rest than yeah. I ever did in the flesh. And so. then there's that one in Isaiah too, right? This is the rest and this is the refreshing. Yeah. With stammering lips yeah. and another tongue. And that's, there's the rest and the refreshing. And, and that's that. the one I'm referring to because that's talking about uh, tongues. That's yeah. talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit that was prophesied yes. by Isaiah. Yes. And it is, since it is supernatural, you, like Jude says, you're building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. because you're, you are, you are using your faith to do it because it doesn't make sense. So you're actually strengthening your faith. And That's it's, right. we've heard um, Brother Hagen say and other ministers that it's actually the entrance into the other gifts. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay, um, I, want to, I want you to talk about, uh, you know, you, you take it a step further in Habakkuk chapter two. Uh, you, you, you take it another step. I want you to talk to us about you, you saw that God wants us to write down the vision. He, you know, it's not just enough. We, we actually have done this several times. We've seen everything we wrote down come to pass. Yes. And we wrote down oh, so many different times. Oh, that's a great, that's yeah. a great story. We were in, um, we, so it was the one time we went to the Southwest Believers Convention mm -hmm. and it was supernatural. We had room 777. Our bill was uh, $1,111.11. Yeah, at the end of the week after all this. And yeah, we had some powerful things happen in the services too. We had like, that was, uh, we learned some things about taking our authority and um, some power. That's a different testimony though. But this particular one was um, um, Reverend Jerry Savell. He said, I want everybody in here to, um, during his session, write down everything you owe. And so we did that, you know, blah, blah, blah. We didn't write down our house. We didn't think of it at the time, but we wrote down all our credit cards, the car, you know, whatever we had, our rent. Um, and he said, I want you to pray over the say, um, you know, debt and lack are, debt, poverty and lack are smith or broken. Mm -hmm. So we had that. And then we just, and I tucked it away in my wallet, all these things. And then, but we would say that on our way to work in the mornings we, when we would pray together, we would declare that debt and lack were, um, broken over our lives. Mm -hmm. It just became part of what we prayed and agreed on. Well, years later, that actually happened. And I came across that piece of paper and um, I looked, I'm like, honey, look, they're all gone. They're all gone. And yeah. I mean, that doesn't seem, that seems like, I mean, now that what the Lord's done, like exponential, that just seems small. But that was the beginning where we just said, no, you know, hey, it's happened for these other people. 
and we're going to do it. And it happened. And then not long after that, um, we've heard the story where a pastor that we were helping came into our house. And every time he come into our house, he says, I see your house paid for, yeah. you know? And so we started writing that on our checks paid in full. Yeah. Just our, our quoting, quoting our pastor yeah. prophesying over. Yeah. It. And we had a little sticker we put on that we'd gotten mm -hmm. from another ministry, put on the door, it said paid in full. Paid in full. And now our house, our, we've had three paid in full houses. Yeah. We're in the third one, living in the third one right now. Yeah. Um, we have feels lots good. of, we have lots of paid in full stuff. Yeah. It feels good not to have the it's bills. It's wonderful. And yet it, it looked impossible. It looked time. impossible. So, so it's not impossible, is it, for people to, they have to start somewhere. Yeah. And, so as far as like, so right, writing that's, it that's out. writing the vision. And, yeah. you know, Habakkuk says, write the vision. So he that reads it can run. And so you are writing the vision, not just for yourself, but for others. You know, you know we're all we're all affecting the body. Yeah. Uh, you know, what everything that happens with us, it affects the body. Yeah. I mean, you think about all the, uh, you know, the, the cars and things we paid off for people. And if it wasn't if it wasn't for God getting us out of debt, we wouldn't be able to do the things that we're doing for others. So, yeah. So it, it does affect everybody. It does. And um, like um, you're you've had prophecies about writing books and I you know, never really, I didn't have that same word over my life, right. but I've started to see the importance of it, that I need to yeah. write some things down. Oh yeah. And that's why you're helping me write a book yeah. is so that um, I can write it. <clears throat> and so that those that read it can run. Cause there's something about actually like, you know, it's good to hear it, but then it's good to read it too. You oh know? yeah. It's back it up. Yeah. Back it up. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. So that's what that's about. Yeah. So um, what would, what would, uh, what would, you do and recommend people do with with writing down the vision you know like you pray in tongues and you you write in your journal you know can you just talk about that and about journaling or you know like what we did we just took a sheet of paper and wrote out all our debts and can't and you know, declared them canceled yeah, yeah i would um say like what's in your heart like another time um this is I just, I think like it says a picture paints a thousand words. Mm -hmm. I, that's why I love testimonies. Like people can say it just paints a big picture, but it goes with the scripture is we were in a service and um, this was uh, actually Jesse, for one of the first times we ever went to see Jesse, it was like in a convention, like a convention center in Phoenix. It wasn't even a church. Yeah. It was just like a, like a library or something, you know, like a big meeting room. Mm -hmm. And we sowed a seed and he's like, he goes, well, um, I want you to write, you know what that seed's going towards like he called it naming your seed which we you know we're like okay so i drew a picture <laughs> like i'm a picture person i like visuals so i drew a picture of yeah. a house i drew a picture of like some horses um household salvation and an airplane yeah we did a we, <laughs> we drew a jet a, a car and like uh, a dog and yeah we just, I think we've had most of that stuff oh yeah so yeah. it came to pass. So yeah, now the, yeah, the jet just came. The jet just came, and that Finally. was like, <laughs> but so yeah. So find out, like, get scriptures that go with what you're believing for. You know, like, um, dream. Don't be afraid to dream. Yeah, you should always dream because God created us. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like, so you know, write down like God's not afraid. Like, you know, whatever you could dream, it's what He's got's even bigger. But there is something about actually like writing it down, and then you can look at it. Um, some people make vision boards, you yeah. know, because there is something about just seeing it, you know, like we have scriptures around our house. We have a lot of the paintings in our house um, have a meaning to them. They represent like a breakthrough or we have that one jet, the um, SR-71, it's called Peacekeepers. Oh, yeah. And it seems like the Lord always uses that. Like he'd send us to different places and we'd be like, you know, so <laughs> yeah. I look at that and I say, yeah, you yeah. know, Peacekeeper in them. Um, so it's good to keep the vision before your eyes because there's something about um, how it affects your spirit. Like it goes on to your, you know, it's oh, very yeah. important what you look at, you know, um, you want to keep the vision before you write it plain, you know, so that not only you can run with it, but others can run with it, you know, but those vision, I would just like a little side note, you know, um, Terry Savelle, she has a great little teaching on vision boards. And um, I know that that's a great way to like put your vision before you, you know, whether you see yourself in ministry, uh, married, healed, you know, you know, if you need to uh, have your legs healed, you could, you know, keep something before your face of when you used to run or, you know, stuff like that. 
you know, but then get the scriptures too, because then that's the, the word of God has got life in it and it never returns void. So get your scriptures, you know, like by his stripes, I was healed. You know, um, if you're facing rejection, that there's a scripture in, um, I said, Isaiah, I was, I'm sought out. I'm the Lord's delight, yes. you know. It actually says, in my land shall be married. My land shall be married. In fact, that was a scripture the Lord gave me um, before I met Kevin. Mm -hmm. I was in it. This, it pays to be in the right he service. He gave it to me, too. Yeah, he yeah. did. Cool. Mm -hmm. Said, so, I'm yeah. sought out. He just, I started proclaiming that, and my land is married. I'm the Lord's delight. I would, and um, yeah. All right, so in Habakkuk uh, chapter 2, where it says this, it talks about writing out your vision. You know, a lot of the a lot of the prophets they were able to see into the spirit. You know, yes. and you know it's really weird because, uh, you know, pe vi people see visions and then sometimes they don't come to pass. And we've learned, uh, me and you over the years, we've learned that it's God's will is conditional. In other words, people see things and it's God's intention. It's showing what God wants. But most of the prophets that wrote, uh, you know, they, they wrote about things that were going to happen. And uh, some of them were really bad and they didn't happen because the people repented. And then there were other times where the, they wrote of uh, good things that, were, that God had intended for them. But those didn't happen. Like uh, Jesus, Jesus had intentions for Israel. And they, he said that, you know, he wanted to gather them together. And he said, but you wouldn't have it. He said, you didn't discern your day of visitation. This is right before he went to the cross. So, um, you know, it is important to write it down and enforce it. So uh, just in, a, in another, uh, you know, just a couple minutes. What, why why um, does God have us uh, write things down? Like he told Habakkuk, write down the vision. Uh, why does Why does he proclaim things? And yet sometimes it doesn't happen. You know, why, why is, it, is it that we have to do something? Yeah, sometimes it's the timing. And while you're speaking, I was thinking of um, the eye of the needle. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes we're too big to receive or we're too small or our vision's too yeah, small or, to yeah. receive. We need like some sort of something needs to happen to us. There's an adjustment. An and, adjustment. Yeah. And sometimes um, it's for an appointed time, which it says. Mm -hmm. it, even though it tarries, it's, it, tarries yeah. it's for it will come, but it's for an appointed time. And I'm thinking about a story of the ministry I was involved with on the mission field. They, the Lord had promised them they're going to get a ship. It was like a mercy ship to take um, medical supplies, supplies yeah. to um, to needy places. And they found the ship and um, something happened. They were all so excited. And then something happened where it fell through and they were just like heartbroken. Mm -hmm. And what it was is it was, uh, they call it the, it's a great book, death of a vision or something like that. By yeah. the, 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 the head of the Y. Lauren Cunningham. Yeah. The Y wham. Yeah. Y wham. Yeah. And they were just heartbroken because they thought it was the perfect ship. Well, they went through that. Uh, it was like going through the eye of the needle. You know, sometimes you think, well, you know, I got to get through the eye of the needle. I'm too big. And the, don't get too, uh, stressed out over that because even like you're born again, it's by grace through faith. It's by grace through faith that he even gets you. That was a lesson <laughs> learned too, that he, mm -hmm. even though you know you need to downsize or you need something done in you, you can't even do it yourself, but you can just say, I'm willing. Right. So those people judge themselves and they got their heart right and they got back believing the vision was still true that they were going to have a mercy ministry ship. But the one they ended up getting was like a beautiful, I think it was like an Italian cruise liner. It was just gorgeous. And they named it the Anastasi, which means resurrection. Beautiful. I got to see it um, in Hawaii on my way back from the mission field. Wow. Just beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what they got was so much better. So um, though it tarry, wait for it. And make Amen. sure, you know, that it's, it's, it's good to get all your dreams out there. And then as you're praying in the spirit, the Holy Spirit will highlight the ones that are you know, because that's the one that's really going to hit the mark is the one that's from the Lord. That's you right. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, so now let talk to me about the 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 next thing uh, that you want you want uh, you want to the people to know is about the fire of God. And you know, you have a scripture reference within Luke, you know, chapter three. But 
the fire of God, how, why is that important? Because, you know, we both know what that means. And I know that there's a, there's a, a fire from the other realm that needs to come to this realm. And that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. But, you know, Jesus was, was baptized in fire and the, all the prophets were baptized in fire. There was, there's uh, different prophets that saw the fire in the, in the throne room. And so with the fire of God, there's a, there's a refiner's fire with this. And there's what happened with Isaiah, uh, how he was touched, his lips were touched by the coal. Uh, we got Timothy, he was told by Paul, fanning the flame, the fire, uh, f- to fan the flame, um, the, the, uh, the, the embers or, or whatever um, the gift was that was in Timothy, he needed to do something about it. So what does this all mean? Well, it's, there's is the refiner's fire. I always, I always love that phrase, embrace the fire. So there's embrace the fire. God, like, that's God. what Jesus, when he appeared to me back in 2000, he, he said, said you, yield to yeah. the fire. And yeah. there's a, um, our God is a consuming fire. That's right. So um, the fire is your friend. Um, the fire. Yeah, the, the Lord had given me that phrase yeah. and he, he was wanting us to, to work with him. Yes. And just to embrace, don't run from the fire, but remember that on the day of Pentecost, It wasn't only um, that they were in other tongues, but it was tongues of fire. And so in Isaiah, the scripture talks about when um, I saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. You know, Uzziah Mm -hmm. said, I'm undone. Mm -hmm. And they took a coal and they put it on his tongue. And there's something about the fire of God um, on your tongue has a purifying effect. If you want to be purified, which we all do for believers, we want to be uh, that pure vessel for the Lord mm-hmm. is um, praying um, in other tongues is one way to embrace the fire, you know, because okay. that, that fire is just like with Uzziah. It was on his tongue and his, he was yeah. purged. Yeah, I, I, Isaiah, Isaiah got touched by that. And then he was he, his words were and then the people that he was sent to as well. Yeah. Yeah, so we 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 um, we need more exposure. So how do we how do we get that? How do we get that fire? I would say that um, one of the ba- best ways is praying in other tongues. It doesn't make sense. Um, and then what the Lord shows you as you're praying, we've learned this about praying in other tongues, is that you might think that if this situation was taken care of in my life, everything would be okay. But yet, while you're praying in other tongues, the Holy Spirit will bring something up. You know, you need to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And you're like, that just seems so small. But you deal with that. And it's like, it's the one thread that unties the big knot ball, you know? So he knows, like, what order things need to be dealt with. And so that's going to help. And obeying him is going to keep the fire, you know? And then, uh, like, he told you to yield to the fire or... um, embrace the fire like when when stuff comes count it joy don't run stay in the fire Mm -hmm. and let it it's what the good thing about the fire is it's going to ignite what is of the lord Mm -hmm. but also burn up what's not of him that's good you know what i mean so there's a refiner's fire we just um you know just embrace those fires it's um there's fires um there's fiery people, fiery beings, you know, there's fire in heaven. Yeah. There's good fire. And um, a lot of the way to keep the fire going, it's it's not, um, you know, I was, I was thinking about when you're talking the other day about how Lucifer had that yeah. fire because Hillel. he, Hillel, yeah. he became defiled. Yeah. He defiled the sanctuaries. He, iniquity was found in him. So that fire for him consumed him but because of the lord the lord's mercy we're allowed to have the fire and we're not consumed because of the blood of jesus yeah so it's a very humbling thing to be able to be allowed to have the fire of god in our lives and um it is a refiner's fire it's a purifier and it's because of the blood of jesus that we're not consumed by it you know yeah like lucifer Hallel was 
you know, yeah. but that fire is in us and it's on us. Yeah. Amen. It's a, it's also a mystery. So it's not yeah. completely explainable. Yeah. But when I was in heaven, there was a lot of fire. Everything is, is at a heightened level and, and fire has to do with purity. Yes. It has to do with holiness. And, you know, because it's a standard, it, it wants to consume anything that is not appropriate. You know, it, it, in other words, it's a higher standard. So when it, fire is introduced into your life, there's going to be some changes. There's going to be some things happen. There's going to be things disappearing. There's mm -hmm. going to be, you know, there, there's going to be even division. You know, there, a lot of times when the God would move in history, there would be division in the in the church. And the reason why is, is that, you know, there's certain people that are just entrenched. They don't want, they don't want to change. They, they like it the way it is. So talk about that in, in, in the last uh, few minutes of, of this section about change and how uh, the fire of God is consuming. And, you know, something that was there might just disappear, right? In a puff of smoke. Yes. Uh, I, I lost friends. I lost uh, all kinds of things at times. Um, I learned to just let God have his way all the time. And then it didn't seem so abrupt when he would move. And, you know, he would tell me, well, you weren't supposed to have that anyway. <laughs> you know, you weren't supposed yes. to be involved with that anyway. You know, yeah. So and talk about that. Yes. And if the fire, um, you know, we're born again, not of corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. So anything that's um, what's born of God overcomes the world. Mm -hmm. So if it's in your life, something's in your life and it's born of God, it will overcome, it will survive the fire, it'll even get better in the fire. But if it's not, it won't. And you don't want it anyhow, you know, it's like, it's a cute saying, bow now and avoid the rush. You know, you can, <laughs> there's a lot of homework you can do now before Jesus comes and he is coming. And that's really on our hearts as well as that it is time to pick up the race. It is time to, uh, or pick up the pace and finish mm -hmm. your race. You yeah. know, he's coming and people we know have actually heard from him himself that it's sooner than we think. Yeah. And so it's a good uh, time to embrace the fire. And one, you know, one, we say this, we've said this a lot, but one way you can embrace it, we've never said it exactly this way, but just say yes. Yeah. You know, when you just say yes to the Lord, that's going to burn up what's not of him. You know, you, I don't, I just, Lord, you're saying this. I say, yes, I agree with you. Like Mary did. She said, be it unto me that's right. according to your word. And that it's just a simple adjustment agreement with the Lord. And then um, you're in alignment with heaven. And then the angels are unhindered. You know, they're also flames of fire. So you want them on your side. So when you agree with God's word, you agree with heaven, you agree with what he's telling you, mm -hmm. then those angels, which are flames of fire, are going to be able to work with you unhindered, you know? Right. So, yeah, that's another part of it. Yeah, because you got to remember, there's certain, there's certain things that are in, that are in, in, uh, er, the, in everything. So one of them is holiness. One of them, one of them is it's the holy, holy fire, yes. you know, because you got holy angels. They're just not angels. They're, they're holy, holy angels. angels. You so got the Holy that's Spirit. That's a good point. Yes. Holy. Yeah. You got the Holy word of God. You know, you got holy fire. You got everything. Everything is, is holy because it's set apart and it's a higher standard. Yeah. And we're called to be holy. He set us apart as holy as unto him. And, um, yeah, he is holy, holy, holy. He is the Lord God Almighty. And he was, he is, and he is coming back. And we, um, he's given us everything we need for life and godliness, you That's know, right. and he's given us the fire, um, for a reason. There's a reason the fire came on the day of Pentecost, Amen. you know, and there's a reason we have that hint in Isaiah, you know, about the coal, Yeah. <laughs> you know, and the refiner's fire. So, um, yeah, embrace the fires. It'll help you get ready. You know, pray in other tongues. Um, say yes to God. Agree with the word. Amen. Yeah, and just um, just ask him, Lord. Yeah, like this is what one of the things I pray for people if they're going through something. I more than anything, I want them to have a revelation. Once they get a revelation exactly. of what's going on, you know, then boom, they can take steps. But when it's just like cloudy, a mystery, they don't know, is God doing this to me? Did I do something? Mm -hmm. Is somebody else, you know, it's just like, you know, I, 
you know, just this big mystery. But once you get the revelation from heaven, you're like, okay, this is what's going on. And the good story was Paul. He said that one, there was a woman with a spirit of divination that followed him many days. Like think about the apostle Paul. He let this woman that was operating in a wrong spirit follow him saying, these are servants of the most high God that show us the way of salvation. You know, she was giving him publicity, but it was from the wrong source. Mm -hmm. So it was making Paul look like he didn't know what was going on. You know, they're like, well, maybe this lady is for real. But he said, after many days, he was grieved and he spoke to that spirit and he said, come out. Mm -hmm. And she got miraculously delivered. And so that's a good example of revelation. As soon as he was grieved, he got that revelation. This, this thing's coming down. <laughs> so that's what we pray. I pray, you know, I love like, I'll pray for your healing. I'll pray for everything. But if I can get you to see for yourself what's going on, that is a precious gift, that spirit of revelation Amen. and wisdom and discernment and revelation of the knowledge of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's good. Well, let's see here. Um, you... You also um, talk about and you you have a revelation on the words, you know, the importance of words. So can you um, talk about that, too? There's there's um, a lot to be said. Jesus said a lot about words. Everybody, everybody in the Bible talks about words. God started everything with words. So he did. How, how important are your words? Super duper important. <laughs> OK. All right. Well, we're created in his image, you know, and so yeah. we don't want to let any corrupt communication come out of our mouth you know we don't want to have like James talks about where there's good and bad coming out of the same place because mm -hmm. the same fountain you know uh, life and death is in the power of our tongue so um, if you can't find the proper words to say in a given situation you don't have to say anything you know you can um, you know it's hard to win a spiritual battle in the natural so if you don't yeah. know what to say you don't have to say it, but let the Lord give you the words and the reply of your tongue. And um, yeah, words are so powerful. They um, and praying in other tongues is so powerful because that's mm -hmm. those are words too. You might not know what they're what they are, but um, it's going to be bringing strength. And when you speak words of truth, you're going to be speaking somewhere you want to go. It says the entrance of your word gives light. So. If you're speaking words of truth, you're also going to be helping other people, you know, see mm -hmm. in your light. We see light. So, yes, we are creating God's image. So to not speak the truth in a situation is to, again, be like a fish trying to breathe air or a human trying to breathe water. Yeah. You know, we, we are created to um, speak where we're going. You know, like like I used to I would say I am sought out yeah. I'm the Lord's delight. My land is married, even though I was divorced. But mm -hmm. the truth is, I'm sought out. The Lord's delight. My land is married. You know, we're debt free. That's even right. Even though we had a mortgage, we were calling things that were not as though they were, just like our father does. Right. You know, and then and plus, the thing is, is <clears throat> it's, um, you know, his word doesn't return void, but it's like it makes you you just feel like there's the peace comes when you're when your words are lined up with heaven, mm -hmm. you know, and then again, the angels are free to help us, yeah. you know, when we're not saying bad stuff and we're not grieve, we don't want to grieve our angels either. Mm -mm. <clears throat> you know, like when we say bad words that grieves our angels and then, you know, but like none of this is bondage because we always have that. There's a quick reset button and it's called repentance. Mm -hmm. So if you do say uh, wrong words, which I'm sure all of us have, we can say, uh, like I often say this, Lord, I repent of wrong words, deeds, and actions. I repent of doubt and unbelief. I don't want that in me. I just do it as like a checkup, you know. Oh, yeah. It's like washing, <laughs> you know, it's like even if the sink's clean, sometimes I clean it out again, you know. It's like just to make sure it smells good. So um, you can always do a, a checkup from the neck up, like they say. And then, you know, we've heard it too that your you know your voice is your address so oh, yeah. your voice you might say well everybody else is you know singing or or saying but you need to sing you need to say god likes your sound he made he decided he wanted you so he made you you know Amen. so there's a song in you that needs to come out you know and um there's a there's words that need to come out 
and um, not just for you, but for the generations after you. Mm -hmm. Like you might say, well, no one in my family has ever like spoken like this. You know, we always call it like it is, you know. I know. <laughs> but you can be the first one to turn it around with your words. And you can, um, you know, start sowing seeds of truth. Like my generations will serve the Lord. Yes. You know, my generations will prosper and walk in health. You know, and there's so much there. We could go on and on about words. Yeah, but but um, get into you know how 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 the uh, you know if we hadn't changed how we talked, if we hadn't changed our our the way we lived and and not st and started speaking where we're going mm -hmm. is what the Lord told me to do. That when I started speaking where we were going, when you you start speaking, what happened was the Lord told us, okay, then what I want you to do is I want you to 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 work extra because you can work extra. So we both worked extra for ten years. Yes. We worked. A, I worked a double schedule for for two for for um, ten years. Yes. And so it started to you know the, so there is that part of it too, right? It started yeah, to shift. It our did priorities. instead of feeling like a victim too, like we didn't have any power. We're like, okay, we're at our jobs. We both knew we were called to the ministry. We'd both been in the ministry before we met, mm -hmm. and then we got called into secular jobs. I went into, I became a cosmetologist. I did hair, and Kevin became a flight attendant, and both about the same time, which was kind of interesting, even though we hadn't met yet. Yeah, and um. We both were thinking, this just doesn't seem like, you know, this doesn't seem like where we should, you know, we both felt, thought we were going to be full-time ministry right, right off the get-go. But what we began to say is we knew God had called us to our jobs. We yeah. both knew that for yeah. sure. It was supernatural. Like we had so much, both of us favored our jobs. It wasn't something that we would have chosen on our own, right. but we both were like favor. And there was no striving really because we knew God had sent us there. And um, yeah. but so we began to speak that, Lord, just like you called us to our jobs, we know that with that same intensity, you will also call us out. That there's mm -hmm. like there's a beginning and an end. So that helped us to rest in it that we because we knew we couldn't just like say, well, I'm done working. You know, let's go do something else. Let's go in the ministry. We knew it had <laughs> to come. We had to come out on the word of the Lord. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. There's, you can speak your destination. You can say, um, I hear his voice and the voice of a stranger I will not follow. Yes. You know, that I'm more than a conqueror. And you can do these things. What happens too, which is really cool, and um, I would recommend the people to read anything by Charles Caps on words, oh, yeah. is he has such a revelation of how as we speak God's word, it's like our spirit, your spirit gets so excited when it hears God's word coming onto it. And it will actually... There's a process that happens. It's it's probably similar to eating, where your spirit will cause, begin to cause that to come to pass. So you want to make sure you're meditating, like praying in the spirit or meditating on the word, because it will actually begin to become part of you. And it's almost like there's a compass inside of you, you know, as you pray in other tongues, which is words coming out of you, and as you're speaking the scriptures and they're going in your ears and they're registering on your spirit, that compass will actually. Uh, start to line up with those words. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. Your cells are going to be happy when they hear the <laughs> word of God. You know, your mind, everything, and um, the people around you are going to be blessed by that resurrection life that's around you, the resurrection life that's in the word of God. You know, that yeah. word of God that we're speaking, it's just not, these aren't just like words. This is Jesus, okay? And Jesus conquered hell, death, and the grave. So you're, this is like, he conquered hell, death, and the grave, and he was resurrected. So this is a resurrection words, you know, don't yeah. downplay it. We're not, you're not getting into works, you know. This is like, there's just truth. Our bodies were created to respond to the written word of God, the spoken word of God. That's good. It's so good. It just goes yeah. on and on. There's so many right. layers. But, you know, God's... God's it's a holy used, word of God. Yeah. God spoke all... Holy Bible. Amen. <laughs> God spoke these worlds into existence through words. He framed the world yes. with his words. Yes. And so he created us in his image. Yes. So we need to remember that, that, you know, we're, we're speaking spirit. We, we are. Yeah. And we have the ability to call the things that are not as though they were. We have the ability to say the mountains be removed. And if we don't doubt in our heart, but we believe it, what we say with our mouth, if we believe it, 
in our hearts, it's yes. going to be done. Yeah, that same principle that we got yeah. born again by and um, works in all areas. And we used to say when we get new places, like, mm -hmm. like our house was like we wanted to make it more our flavor or our, our offices or every, anything we get. We say we call the wall salvation and the gates praise. You know, we use scriptures. We speak them over even our houses, you know, and other things that they're going to mm -hmm. like they're going to be beautified and glorified, you know, so they're going to reflect him. So that's you can. Good. Yeah, that's just a practical. Yeah. Example. Okay. Yeah, that's that's good. We've seen this happen and it's it's not something that we just talk about. We've seen it happen. We know it works we know because it works, it's the word yeah. of God. Um, all right. In in uh, in conclusion, in the, you you talk about uh, Isaiah sixty six, eight, and you talk about the revelation um, that that comes through by the Spirit, and you know the the revelation of the kingdom. Jesus said in Matthew thirteen, for instance, he said, "Listen, if you understand this parable, you understand the deep mysteries of the kingdom mm -hmm. of God." And then he was talking about the parable of the sower which is really, Jesus told me, is a parable of the, of the soils. So, um, you know, what can you, what if, what's the Lord shown you about revelation and about the kingdom and how uh, prayer nations is, is a revelation, but it's, all, it's a kingdom principle, right? Yes, it's a kingdom principle, and I'm just going to read it sure. since we've been talking oh, yeah. about it. It says, who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day, or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth. And shall I bring, shall I bring to birth and not cause to bring forth? So that's a good point. Like that kind of wraps up what we're talking about here is that there is like a travail I wanted to touch on, you know, mm -hmm. that um, yes, a nation can be born in a day. And that's how God works. You know, he can, um, you know, before we call, he can answer. And there is, um, you can feel like, you just feel like you're having a, I've, we've never had kids, but I've had horses that have had babies and I've been there for that whole process. And I have experienced the travail in the spirit. And there is something um, that the Lord's talking about here in Isaiah 66, that before you travail. So could you imagine like getting ready to have a baby, but then the baby's already there? That's how fast it could happen. Like before you think you're gonna have to die, you're resurrected, you know, type of thing is what God's talking about that principle mm -hmm. that um, just don't give up your ground. It says um, in another scripture that we love in, I believe it's Ecclesiastes, when the spirit of the ruler rises against you, don't leave your post. So sometimes, and they say the darkest hours just before the dawn. So, and before you travail, yes, you can bring forth. Sometimes it's going to seem so intense, just like unbearable, but then boom, the mm -hmm. breakthrough, there's a tipping point, you know? Mm -hmm. And so just when you think it's not going to happen, that's when it is going to happen. So that's the encouragement that, you know, the scripture brings is that, yeah, before you travail, you can bring forth that is really in as far as spiritually there might be something that you're believing god for and you feel like it's just like so heavy and you just praying and praying and praying and then boom you know and then it says when the baby comes you don't even remember the bad stuff mm -mm. like that um that word that friend had for me the good god has for you catherine she called me catherine is so good you won't remember the bad and that's true that when the good comes, when God's restoration comes, you don't remember the bad. You can't even try to be sad. So um, it's good just to always gird up our mind with this type of things, because when you're in the battle mm. and you feel like you're all alone and nothing's working is what it appears, you know, like, you know, God's not he's going to come through like you hear lies, like he's going to come through for everybody, but not for you. <laughs> or he might have come through before, but not this time. You know, all that stuff you hear mm -hmm. is like you want to have these scriptures that, yeah, hey, be quiet because a nation can be born in a day and be quiet, devil, because, you know, before I travail, I'm going to bring forth, you know, and, um, you know, if that does happen to you where you get that supernatural travail on you, mm -hmm. just yield to it because you don't know what is going to be born through that. In fact, I was on the phone with Esther a good friend of ours intercessor yesterday 
And I just called her. It happened to be the right time. She was in the middle of it. <laughs> so I just let her go. I'm like, oh, she's birthing something. I'm just going to like, kind of like, just pray along with her until she gets onto the other side. Because whatever it is, I want it to happen. Because <laughs> if this lady gets intercession on her, you don't want her to be hindered. <laughs> right. Amen. I know. So. Well, well uh, so, so what principles could you leave us with in closing? And then I want you to impart to the people and pray for the people in part, um, you know, what, what you've talked about to them. But what, what can you leave us about what God's plan is for the kingdom to advance? And it's, it's really a more aggressive. The kingdom of God is more aggressive than we think. And so what, what can you leave us with as far as this subject? I would say um, in everything we've talked about, keep it simple. You know, there's a rest for the people of God. And that there's a scripture in Psalm 16 that says, my boundaries have fallen for me in pleasant places. So, and he's made my lot secure. So there's a place for you that he's ordained for you to operate from and to, for your supply of the spirit, you know? So I would say, stay in that, keep it simple, enjoy the journey, you know, remember joy is your strength and joy will actually give you strength to bring forth. You know, there's a, a scripture that says that they couldn't bring forth. There wasn't enough strength, but it says that um, with joy, you can draw from the wells of salvation. So don't get discouraged is what I would say. Keep it simple. Remember how effective you are. I think that's really, you know, don't get out of your lane. Stay in your lane. Enjoy your lane. Uh, make your lane the best lane on the highway, you know? Amen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody can have the best lane, but we need everybody. Um, I just really feel like keep it simple, keep it clean, keep short accounts with God, don't get complicated and, you know, praise him, sing. You know, there's such an, I feel like that is like such a truth is there's an ease in the glory. Yeah. If the Lord leads you to start singing in the spirit, just let him, let the spirit sing through you. Just don't, it's like if he's given us the easy way, it's we're not gonna get any extra brownie points for doing it the hard way. Mm -hmm. You know, so just keep it simple. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Well, why don't you just look into the camera and just impart and pray for the people for a few minutes and, and then we'll close. Okay. So go ahead and All pray. Right. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, we pray for thank all you. our friends watching us, Lord, that you would give them, Lord, that spirit of wisdom mm -hmm. and revelation no, and the knowledge of you, that you would strengthen them with might and power in their inner man, Lord, and that they would, um, their path would be clear before them, that they would know um, to go to the left or to the right. We declare over them that they hear your voice and the voice of a stranger they do not follow, that you heal them, Lord. Lord, awesome. anything that needs healed inside, outside, or otherwise, Lord, that you would heal them from the inside out. I thank you for a quick work in their lives, Lord, that you would multiply their seed sown back to them, Lord, and that you would encourage them. Lord, we ask you for even today, encouragement from, whether it's from your word, from your spirit, Lord, or from an individual, or maybe they find a letter or something, you've, a prophecy you've given them before that they would be encouraged and strengthened. Joy, joy, joy. We speak joy over them. Ha, ha, ha. Strength to bring forth. And they, they would finish their course with joy. Thank you, Father. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us on Kevin and Friends. And we appreciate everything. Everything that uh, all our partners, everybody yes. who is operating in Warrior Notes, uh, partners, students, all our friends all over the world, we thank you for everything you're doing and praying for us and standing with us in faith that we would accomplish everything that God has on his heart for Warrior Notes. Yes. And we just thank you for all your financial support, everything you're doing for us. And th thank you, Kathy, for coming on and thank talking you. about your vision. And, and it's, and it's amazing what God can do through somebody who just wants wants what God wants yes. and, and and agrees with him. So uh, this is Dr. Kevin Zeta with Kevin and Friends and thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Hello everyone, Dr. Kevin Zeta with you with Warrior Notes and I would like to talk to you about the brand new release that I have in my hand right here, Taking Off the Limitations. This book has changed my life. 
Out of all the books I've done so far, this one has impacted me the greatest of all, and I want you to have it. And so we are putting together a package. I want you to take advantage of this great deal. It's uh, the book, Taking Off the Limitations, and the CD. It's an impartation CD called Taking Off the Limitations as well. And I put these together so that you can have an environment of heaven around you and so that you can learn and you can grow. And we just want you to grow in faith. And this book is talking about some of the things that just happened to me recently. All the miracles that I've seen happen just in the last six months have been because of the revelation that God gave me in this book. And we're gonna be talking about the supernatural freedom that you get and the access that you get uh, through Jesus Christ and how my walk increased through this revelation of taking the limitations off. It's just like um, flight training when you realize that you can go higher and faster. It seems like at the time that you don't even believe that you had this on you, you had limitations the whole time and you didn't even know it and now they're gone. So. I want you to check this out. I know you'll be blessed. God bless you. Amen.